Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is the sixth chapter of grade 9 Plate Tectonic Theory. This is the second session of this chapter Theory of Sea Floor Spreading. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. First, list the observation made by Harry Hess in the Atlantic Ocean. Second, illustrate the seafloor spreading theory with the help of a diagram. Predict the consequences of seafloor spreading. Correlate the theory of continental drift and sea floor spreading. Before we begin our exploration about the sea floor spreading, let us look at some of the common misconceptions regarding this theory. Some people believe that all the oceans were formed at the same time. Some people think that Earth's poles are located at the same place since the formation of Earth. And some people believe there is no power that can make such huge continents move from one place to another. After the theory of continental drift, the next theory that came in existence was the theory of seafloor spreading. It was surprisingly during the World War II that gave scientists the tool to find the mechanism for continental drift theory. It was this theory which answered the question which was left unanswered by continental drift theory. During the war, battleships and submarines carry eco sounder to locate enemy submarines. Eco sounders produce sound waves that travel outwards in all direction, bounce off the nearest object and then return to the ship. The round trip time of the sound wave is then recorded. By knowing the speed of sound in seawater, scientists could calculate the distance to the object that the sound wave hit. During the war, the sound wave rarely encountered any enemy submarine and so most of the sound waves ricocheted off the ocean bottom. After the war, all this information was used to produce a map of the sea floor. Such maps are known as bathymetric maps and this is what led to the theory of seafloor spreading suggested mainly by Professor Harry Hess. The discoveries were very thought provoking. It was found there is a chain of mountains located underwater and the shape of the chain of these mountains is very similar to the coastlines of the adjacent continents. You can see that in this picture. It was also found that where these ridges are located, the ocean floor is very thin near these ridges. It's hardly 4 to 5 km thick. Whereas, rest all ocean, the ocean floor is around 10 to 20 km thick. Harry has also found that there is a continuous chain of volcanoes, active volcanoes, all along the mid Atlantic ridge. This would mean that there was continuous 
eruption of magma from beneath the surface in the water what could be the effect of such continuous eruption of magma this is what the scientists were able to explain scientists suggested that as the hot mantle material rises up towards the surface at mid ocean ridge this hot material causes the ridge to rise which is one reason that mid oceanic ridge are higher than the rest of the sea floor so once america and africa were joined together as hot material from mantle started erupting it pushed america and africa apart as more and more lava erupted it pushed the continents further away and this lava cooled and formed a thin ocean floor as this process continued new magma rose above the crust and pushed the present ocean floor away subsequently pushing the continents away and forming new ocean crust so according to sea floor spreading america and africa got separated due to the constant eruption at the mid atlantic ridge if you look at the ridge carefully we observe that the age of the rock is indicative of the same the youngest rocks are found adjacent to the mid atlantic ridge whereas as we move away from this ridge towards the continent the age of the rocks keep on increasing the oldest rocks are located near the edge of the continents in this case in this diagram rocks r and c are the oldest they are located at the edges of continents of america and africa and rocks labeled as p and a are the youngest magnetic patterns this was one more discovery the scientists made at the ocean floor scientists were surprised to discover that the normal and reverse magnetic polarity of sea floor creates a pattern of magnetic strips there is one strip with normal polarity next to one long strip with reverse polarity and so on across the ocean bottom another amazing feature is that the strips form mirror image on either side of the mid ocean ridge the ridge crest is of normal polarity and there are two strips of reverse polarity of roughly equal weight on each side of the ridge further distant are roughly equal strips of normal polarity beyond that roughly equal strips of reverse polarity and so on as stated the youngest rocks were found near the ridge as we move away from the ridge the rocks become older in age and no rock in the atlantic ocean was more than 200 million years old that means the ocean floor is not more than 200 million years old which also suggests that the continents of america and africa began separating 200 million years back which is exactly what was told by alfred wegener in his theory of continental drift so the sea floor spreading can be stated like this it's a process by which molten material adds new oceanic crust to the ocean floor as molten material erupts it pushes the existing crust away and forms new crust this is how 
the theory of Pangaea was revisited. By piecing together this information, we can easily see how the continents must have moved over the past 200 million years due to seafloor spreading. This was all for this session. In the next session, we will talk about subduction. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.